Good morning. I want to welcome you as we gather for worship on this occasion called the Sunday of the Holy Trinity. It's a day that we are reminded that we worship only one God who has revealed himself as being three distinct persons, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And in our service today, we are using as part of our worship something called the Athanasian Creed. It's a long one, but it is divided into sections between pastor and people, so it won't be as uh, difficult for us to confess. Uh, with that in mind, please rise as we begin with the invocation and opening sentences. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, who was, and is, and is to come. For you created all things. And by your will, they exist and they were created. Almighty God, we are called to confess you as the God who has no equal. You are three distinct persons, yet one God. You are holy, we are not. You are righteous, we are not. Yet in your foreknowledge, you knew this would be our state, and you made a distinct and definite plan for a way to redeem us from our sins. The sin of thought, which crept into our minds daily, our words, which deserve death because of the evil that comes from our tongues, and our deeds, which we know go against your holiness. Forgive us, Lord, for these and all sins, not because we are deserving, but for your definite plan of mercy and grace shown to us at the cross. I ask you before God who searches all hearts and one another, is this your sincere confession? If so, answer yes. Yes, this is my sincere confession before God and before my brothers and sisters in Christ. Hear the good news on this day. God has forgiven you all your sins because of the blood of Jesus shed at the cross. In the stead and at the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thanks be to God for his mercy and grace. May God, who began this definite plan before he created the world, continue to work in you and bring it to completion on the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord, for loving us giving us and having a definite plan for us. As God's forgiven people, we share God's peace to one another. Peace be with you. And peace be with you. And peace be with you. Peace be with you, Tony. Peace be with you. And peace be with you. In peace, let us pray to the Lord, Lord have mercy. for the creation of this world which has turned us back on you, Lord, have for the creation of all the wonders of this world and having a purpose for all you have created, Lord, have mercy. for knowing us before you created us, Lord, have mercy. for redeeming us at the greatest cost to you, Lord, have mercy. for sending your Holy Spirit into this world and giving him to us at our baptism, Lord, for using the Holy Spirit to make us your own, Lord, as we consider all the times we have offended you and you forgave us for Jesus' sake, Lord, continue to help, save, direct, comfort, and defend us.
Let us pray. Almighty God, you are three persons, yet one God. This is a mystery that is beyond our understanding. You ask us not to understand, but simply believe. Give us the faith of a child that what you have said in your word about yourself, we may believe in our hearts and live out by faith in our lives. We pray this in the name of Jesus, with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, who was, who is, and who is coming, the Almighty. You may be seated. The Holy Trinity, the Old Testament reading, Isaiah chapter 6, verse 1 through 8. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting upon a throne, high and lifted up, and the train of his robe filled the temple. Above him stood a seraphim. Each had six wings. With two he covered his face, and with two he covered his feet, and with two he flew. And one called to the other and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. And the foundations of the thresholds shook at the voice of him who called. And the house was filled with smoke. And I said, Woe is me, for I am lost, for I am a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of people with unclean lips. For my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Then one of the seraphim, seraphim flew to me, having in his hand a burning coal that he had taken with his tongue from the altar. And he touched my mouth and said, Behold, this has touched your lips. Your guilt is taken away and your sin atoned for. And I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send and who will go for us? Then I said, here am I, send me. This is the word of the Lord. The epistle reading is from Acts chapter 2, 14a, verse 22 through 36. Peter, standing with the eleven, lifted up his voice and addressed them. Men of Israel, hear these words. Jesus of Nazareth, a man attested to you by God with mighty words and wonders and signs that God did through him in your midst. As you yourselves know, this Jesus delivered up according to the, def the definite plan and foreknowledge of God, you crucified and killed by the hands of lawless men. God raised him up, losing the pangs of death because it was not possible for him to be held by it. For David says concerning him, I saw the Lord always before me, for he is at my right hand, that I may not be shaken. Therefore my heart was glad and my tongue rejoiced. My flesh also will dwell in hope. For you will not abandon my soul to Hades, or let your Holy One see corruption. You have made known to me the paths of life. You will make me full of gladness with your presence. Brothers, I may say to you with confidence about the patriarch David, that he both died and was buried, and his tomb is with us to this day. Being therefore a prophet and knowing that God has sworn with an oath to him that he would set one of his descendants on his throne. He foresaw and spoke about the resurrection of Christ, that he was not abandoned to Hades, nor did his flesh see corruption. This Jesus God raised up, and of that we are all witnesses. Being therefore exalted at the right hand of God and having received from the Father the promise of the Holy Spirit, he has poured out this that you yourselves are seeing and hearing. For David did not ascend into heavens, but he himself says, The Lord said to my Lord, Sit at my right hand 
until I make your enemies your footstool. Let all the house of Israel therefore know for certain that God has made him both Lord and Christ, this Jesus whom you crucified. This is the word of the Lord. Hallelujah. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. Please rise for the Holy Gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the third chapter. Glory to you. Now there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. This man came by Jesus to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher come from God, for no one can do these signs that you do unless God is with him. Jesus answered him, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus said to him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter a second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born of water and the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. That which is born of, the, of flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Do not marvel that I said to you, you must be born again. The wind blow where it wishes, and you hear its sound, but you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. So it is with everyone who is born of the Spirit. Nicodemus said to him, How can these things be? And Jesus answered him, Are you the teacher of Israel, and yet you do not understand these things? Truly, truly, I say to you, we speak of what we know and bear witness to what we have seen, but you do not receive our testimony. If I have told you earthly things and you do not believe, how can you believe if I tell you heavenly things? No one has ascended into heaven except he who descended from heaven, the Son of Man. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him must, may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, You may be seated as we confess our faith with the words of the Athanasian Creed. I wanted to mention, I got this format from what's called Creative Worship for the Lutheran Parish from Concordia Publishing House. A second thing is, as you read the words, there's a word that, that jumps out at, at you that we generally don't use so much. It's the word Catholic. It's with a small c. And that word simply means universal. So when you see the word Catholic, we don't attach it to a denomination, but we attach it to the meaning of universal. So we begin with our confession. Whoever desires to be saved must, above all, hold the Catholic faith. And the Catholic faith is this. For the Father is one person, the Son is another, and the Holy Spirit is another. Such as the Father is, such is the Son, and such is the Holy Spirit. The Father, infinite. The Son, infinite. The Holy Spirit, infinite. The Father, eternal. The Son, eternal. The Holy Spirit, eternal. And yet there are not three eternals, but one eternal. In the same way, the 
Father is almighty, the Son almighty, and uh, the Holy Spirit almighty. So the Father is God, the Son is God, the Holy Spirit is God. So the Father is Lord, the Son is Lord, the Holy Spirit is Lord. Just as we are compelled by the Christian truth to acknowledge each distinct person as God and Lord, so also are we prohibited by the Catholic religion to say that there are three gods or lords. The Son is neither made nor created, but begotten of the Father alone. Thus there is one Father, not three fathers, one Son, not three sons, one Holy Spirit, not three Holy Spirits. But the whole three persons are co-eternal with each other and co-equal, so that in all things, as has been stated above, the Trinity in unity and unity in Trinity is to be worshipped. But it is also necessary for everlasting salvation that one faithfully believe the incarnation of our Lord Jesus Christ. God, begotten from the substance of the Father before all ages, and he is man born from the substance of his mother in this age. Equal to the Father with respect to his divinity, less than the Father with respect to his humanity. One, however, not by the conversion of the divinity into flesh, but by the assumption of the humanity into God. For as the rational soul and flesh is one man, and so God a man is one Christ. Ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father, God Almighty, from whence he will come to judge the living and the dead. And those who have done good will enter into eternal life, and those who have done evil into eternal fire. I would like to invite the children, any children here, to come forward for an object lesson. I can do this by myself. If there's someone, you know, they can come up. Oh, yes. This is wonderful. Got some work for you to do. Yeah. <laughs> And we just confessed our faith with a creed that sometimes surpasses all human understanding. So I have an object here today, and you probably don't know what this. This is called a frisbee. You know what you do with this? Anyone know what you do with this? What do you do? You throw it in the air. I, oh, I love it. Yeah, you throw it, and what happens? Does it fly? Yeah. Let me try it. Didn't go very far. Did I do it wrong? I did. I'll do it again. Wow, no. Obviously I'm doing it wrong. And I have here a piece of plastic. You know, you're supposed to throw it this way. You know, and if I do it this way, I might get in trouble because we're indoors. This is for outdoors, isn't it? Do it outside. I'm supposed to throw it this way. Here's a piece of plastic. If I toss this, that doesn't really go that far. 
But this is supposed to go quite a distance. And you can play catch with it, as people are doing it. Throw it to one person, they catch it, they throw it back to you and you can catch it. And it's called a frisbee, it's a wonderful object. But you know, I don't understand how this thing can fly the way it flies. There's so many things involved by spinning it and the air currents and everything else, but it's just something I don't understand. And there's something else I don't understand. How can we have only one God, but three distinct persons, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit? That is a very difficult thing for a human brain to understand. We simply believe. We say, I believe. And that's what it is, because God's Word teaches it. So we believe, just like I toss this and I spin it, and it flies. And it flies quite a distance. And that's a good thing. And you know, when church is over and you get home, would you like to have one of these to play with? Yeah, okay. And whenever you want to say, I don't understand how that can fly, what you can do is just remember that we have such an amazing God who does far more amazing things for us in life. What color would you like? Blue? Okay. And what color would you like? Yellow? Here you go. And thank you for coming up. What color would you like? No? What color do you like? There you go. Thanks for coming up. We continue with the hymn of the day. Thank you.
grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Our text for us today is from Isaiah chapter 6. Where the angels are singing, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. It's a beautiful passage that they've shared. You know, over the years, through all my ministry, I have encountered numerous times where a person says about a week before Holy Trinity Sunday, Pastor, you are not going to be using that creed, are you? And we have three creeds in our church. And the word creed comes from the Latin word meaning I believe. The Apostles' Creed is the most familiar, which is drawn from Scripture. There is a tradition that stated that the Twelve Apostles each had a, a line that they contributed, but that's only a myth, not based upon any fact or historical evidence. The Nicene Creed came around 325 AD, formulated by the church because of false teachings that were creeping into the church. And so they wanted to defend the church with a simple way of reflecting the faith of the scriptures. The Nicene Creed does a little bit more where the incarnation of Christ, becoming human, God of the flesh. But then at some point in history came the Athanasian Creed, which uh, most scholars say was not written by Athanasian, Athanasius, um, because he wrote in Greek and this was written in Latin. But it's a creed that's been embraced by the Lutheran Church for one and others. I can remember being a student at seminary, and I had an advisor who was a uh, professor of systematic theology, world renowned, incredible guy. And I told him that I had kind of a concern about the end of that Athanasian creed. It seems a lot like works righteousness. Now, for a student to say that to a professor, could be dangerous, okay? But that's how I felt, you know, because of the way it's worded. But then again, he says, oh, I understand exactly what you're saying, but we keep it because this is scripture. And in the Bible, we do have law and we do have gospel. And so you don't want to get hung up on a line, uh, taken out of context without realizing the rest of scripture and the rest of what's going on. So anyway, I understand his point, and so I willingly will do this creed because it is a gift to the church where it specifically is talking about the differences and the similarities of, of the doctrine of God, the Trinity. Now the word Trinity is not in the Bible, but it expresses a teaching of what is in the Bible. Tri meaning three, unity meaning one, three and one. So if someone says, did you know that the word Trinity is not in the Bible? You say, yes, I knew that. And it expresses a biblical doctrine of God. Three persons, one God. That's what the Trinity means, triune. So you get that out of the way. But it is quite a creed, because when you read it, at the end of it, you're still scratching your head. How can God be one God and yet three distinct persons? Each one of them is fully God, but there's not three gods, only one God. It does not make humanly, you know, understandable sense. Because, and when you try to do an object lesson, I'm sorry, you do an object lesson on Trinity, it never teaches it correctly anyway. I've done those other ways. I've done things like, what, a three-leaf clover, or ice, water, steam, or you name it, or take an apple, you got the seeds, the apple, the core. That's, that doesn't deal with it. And yes, I was really stretching it today. That's the only thing I could find, a dollar tree, you know? So I went with it. Have fun with it. Enjoy, okay? But the fact is, how do we deal with this? What do we believe? What do we really believe? Yes, we believe in the one God, three persons. But there's other things we believe about God. You see it with Isaiah. Isaiah find, finds himself in the presence of God and the glory of heaven. And what does he believe about God? God is holy. We are not. Did you see that? God is holy. 
What's going on? He, when he's staring, all of a sudden, with all the singing and all the, the, the temple shaking, whatever, Isaiah says, oh no, I'm really in trouble. Woe is me. For I am a man of unclean lips, and I live among a people of unclean lips. You see, when he's faced in the presence of God, the holy, righteous, perfect God, what happens? He recognizes his own imperfections. He's not holy. You know, there are certain paints today that have all kinds of tints to them, different colors. And some of the tints may be very light, and when you paint a wall with it, you go in there, it looks white. Oh, what a beautiful white color. But it's not. It's tinted. And if you have something that is truly white, and you go in and compare, you can see there's a difference. The same thing with God. God is holy, and when we are in the presence of God, we recognize our own imperfections. What do I believe? I believe that I am a sinner. I believe, yes, I am a man of unclean lips, and I live among a people of unclean lips, but God is holy. And that belief did cause Isaiah to repent, to realize where he stood before God. And we need to remember that too. A lot of times people say, well, I'm not as bad as others. Well, that was not what Isaiah was saying in the presence of God. He was confessing the fact that he was just as bad as anyone else. A second thing we learn from God is his mercy and his grace. How did God handle Isaiah's sin? The angel took a burning coal from the fire, touched his lips. Now this is up in heaven, right? It's not an earthly thing. Otherwise, Isaiah's lips would have been burned. But the fact is, the coal, burning coal, represented God's forgiveness, which touched the very unclean lips that Isaiah was professing and confessing before God. And so with that burning coal, his sin was forgiven. And that's the God that we confess, in whom we believe, a God who is willing to forgive. That's why when we gather for, especially for the uh, divine worship, we always have confession at the beginning of that service. As we approach God, we confess our sins, and we hear the beautiful words of the absolution. That's what we see in Jesus. In John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he did what? He gave his only son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. And so we need to continue to believe, and not just in what we understand. We can believe in the one true God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, even though we don't understand how that can work as three in one. When I'm driving my car, sometimes I have to use the brake, sometimes I don't. But when I do, I trust that that brake is going to work, even though I don't understand the mechanisms. I put my foot on that pedal, and guess what happens? The car slows down. If it's in a crisis situation and I push a little harder, it stops a bit quicker. But trust me, I don't want to do that. That's why I try to be a, a defensive driver, always thinking of what somebody else might be doing. But you don't have to understand everything, like electricity or something like that. I know we have an electrician here. He understands it. I don't know. When I was a kid and we practiced guitar, sometimes in a basement, my parents' basement, had these steel posts that went up. And I'll never forget the time when my electric guitar and I leaned against one of those posts. I knew that there was electricity going because I began to feel it on my arm and my body. I respect it. We used to play, my buddy and I, outdoors on this stone patio. And we'd have our amplifiers there. We'd be playing outdoors, trying to annoy the neighbors. No, not really try. They liked it, by the way. The neighbors liked it, never called the police on us, and said to the parents, hey, that's nice. But I learned that when I stepped off the stone onto the grass, you don't do that holding your electric guitar because of electricity. But there are things we have in life we don't understand. 
That doesn't stop us from using it, from enjoying it, and from believing in it. And what about the Trinity? We may not understand all the details, but we can believe, yes, this is the God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And we believe in what this God has accomplished for us. Not electricity, but his love, his forgiveness, his grace, his incredible power which created all of this that we see, touch, and understand. But he's also made us as well. And he's done something so far greater. He redeemed us. He made us his own. He brought us forgiveness through the blood of Jesus Christ. He made us his children through baptism and the work of the Holy Spirit. He continues to do things through the, the work of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. One God, three persons, and as a result, you and I are blessed. All in the name and for the sake of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And the peace of God, who's, who surpasses all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through faith in Jesus Christ. Amen. I do have some prayer requests today. The flowers are given by Mr. and Mrs. Craig de Bergeron in honor of their 24th wedding anniversary. And the eternal light is lit by Debbie Morrow in, in memory of Mary, Claire, and George. And in our prayers, we continue to pray for those who have requested our prayers. For Kathy, Amy, and Kim, Sarah, Daryl, Sally, Ron, and Carol, Felicia and George, Ed, Linda Ruland, Bill, Pete Kennedy, Donna, Esther, and Jeff. Arlene Jens is asking for prayers of thanksgiving. She is out of the hospital and out of quarantine. And my wife Sally requested uh, prayers for her cousin Tammy's husband, who is having surgery to stop his tremors. And this is a very delicate surgery. We pray for Frank for failing health, Elsie for strength to handle illness in her family, for Elsie's daughter with bilateral breast cancer, for Wally for healing, and for Tom, that's Judy and Kathy's cousin. Tom is in the hospital with COPD and pneumonia. If the ushers could please come forward to gather the offerings.
Please rise as we sing the offertory. Heavenly Father, we thank and praise you for planning and creating this world for us to inhabit. You have given us the stewardship of it. Where we have failed, forgive us. Give us wisdom to manage what you planned for us. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Lord Jesus Christ, you cared for us with no guarantee we would ever love you back. You lived the perfect life we could not and suffer the death we are not willing to suffer for our sins. We can never repay you. All we can do is thank you, and so we do now. Lord, in your mercy. O Holy Spirit, through your inspiration we have the Holy Scriptures, which are able to make us wise unto salvation in Jesus Christ. Yet without faith freely given by you, we would not be able to believe you, uh, believe, You keep us in that faith our entire journey on this side of eternity. We ask you that you would rule our hearts and minds and bring to our remembrance what the scriptures say at just the right time. Lord, in your mercy. And we lift up those facing health challenges at this moment. Hear our petitions on their behalf. We ask that you use doctors and nurses, medicines and researchers and according to your will, miracles, so that those who have any dreaded disease might be returned to health to serve you. Heavenly Physician, we entrust them to your care and will. Lord, in your mercy. Lord of hosts, we thank you for the many blessings you have bestowed upon this nation. Grant us a long memory to recall those who gave the full measure of devotion to our country's peace and security. Bring to mind the sacrifices of those who served faithfully until death in the protection of our freedom and in the defense of our land. Lord, in your mercy. And to your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. When God gave Aaron and his sons the benediction, he said, Speak to Aaron and his sons, saying, Thus you shall bless the people of Israel, you shall say to them, Receive therefore with believing hearts the benediction of our God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace.
announcements to share? Uh, I do. Okay. So, I have quick, uh, three quick announcements. In our bulletin, we can see that Pastor is going to be providing meet and greet training this Tuesday at 6.30. This is an informal, comfortable training that will help us share our faith. It often seems uncomfortable to talk about our faith, even if we're speaking to family or relatives. And so Pastor is going to give us some information to make that a more comfortable type and more of a natural experience in growing our faith together. Sometimes people will ask us questions or express interest, and we want to be equipped to be able to know how to respond to that in a good way. The second thing I noticed in the bulletin is that we have the Mission Central um, donations coming to a close soon at the end of the month. Our church is very, very generous. We do local types of uh, donations and support. An example is Masters Mana. But it's also good to be part of a global church. The Missouri Synod is operating in over 90 countries around the world. So if we can, it's good to make a donation to help our missionaries around the world. And there are some special envelopes in the back of the church by the offering box to help with that. And the last thing is I'd like to thank everyone who's been working on a new brochure for the church. There's a black and white copy on the conference room table. And there's more revisions that are going to get made, but we're going to get this finished within the next couple of weeks. I think the final version is going to come printed on this nice, glossy, light blue paper with a white, cloudy background. So if you're interested in seeing the progress we've been making, the current rough draft is on the, the table in the conference room. So thank you. Great. Have a very safe Memorial Day weekend. Thank mm -hmm. you.